AWS specifications and classifications. What's the difference? Specifications and classifications? Specifications would be um, like measurements. Uh, You're way off. You're way, way, way off. Okay, so when we talk about specification, we're talking about AWS specification. And usually specifications start with an A. A 5.1 is the specification of mile steel electrodes for SMAW. Yeah, I was way off. So I want you to think of it like this. My barrel, okay? And my barrel says, hold on, let me make it look like a barrel. This is my barrel. Oh, monkeys. Okay, I got a barrel of monkeys. That's the label on the barrel itself. Now, what's in Side the barrel. Monkeys. monkeys, right? Okay, so <clears throat> monkey one. What's monkey one's name? Al. Okay, so that's Al. Okay, and I got monkey two. What's on monkey two? Gustavo. <laughs> okay, so monkey two is Gustavo, right? Okay, so there's Al and Gus the monkey. In my barrel of monkeys. We know these are monkeys, right? And these are their names, Al and Gus. Now, here's my, my barrel again, except this one says A5.1, and this is mild steel electrodes, right? All right. Or SMAW. Now, what's inside the barrel? Mild steel. Mild steel electrodes. Now, what are their names? E6010, E7018. This is the classific or the specification. This is the classification. Does that make sense? So we can have a barrel for any type of electrode, whether it's stick electrodes, and there's a couple of different barrels for stick electrodes. And then we have one for MIG, we have one for TIG, we have one for OXY, we have one for flux core. But they all are within this barrel and then each individual one, this is the classification. And this is the specification. <coughs> so manufacturers must go by this specification under this here and that they follow these classifications to call them E6010 or E7018 or E7024. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, it's got to fall within that barrel to be labeled as E. Correct. Okay, but sometimes we get really confused. What's a classification and what's a specification? Classification is normally the name of it and that abbreviated code. Okay, the specification is going to have a spec in it, so we know it is a specification. And these numbers will change with whatever uh, process we're working with. Okay? All right, onwards. So now that we got classification, we got specification, now we're going to talk about F groups. What's an F group? The F group. Position of the base metal, right? No, F group. Oh, okay. F groups. F groups were designed. Wait, 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 wait. wait. The, um, it's the, uh, the coating, right? The coating on the electrode? Kind of yes and no. Okay, so F groups were originally created to tell the welder how difficult it was to weld. How difficult is this rod to weld? 
So I actually have a list of rods of F groups, and it goes from F1 to F99. And I think F99 is like aluminum rod. But it, it specifies all sorts of different kinds of rods. Well, we're only familiar with the first four. And that's really all we talk about with F groups is the first four. So the first one, F1. They have a number two in the position, which means what? They can be part of another F group? No. Two in position. The number two in position. Oh, uh, What does it mean? What does it tell me? And this is important for you guys to remember. Position. What are we asking here? What are we looking at? Why would I would I care about this in this group? Well, two is for flat and horizontal billet only. So now these are normally called jet rods, right? These will have quick deposition. If I have a 14 inch long rod, more than likely I'm gonna get about 14 inches of weld. Okay, it's very, very fast, it's very, very quick, but we know this about it, right? We know that it can only be flat and horizontal billet only because what they do, they add silicone to it because we want to have a very fluid pool. Well, with the addition of that, for it to go faster, there's a drawback. You can't go up with it. Right. You can't do anything else with it just because it's, yeah. yeah, it rains. Okay, so that's F1, fast fill. There are actually two fill freeze groups. Why would there be two fill freeze groups? Two fill freeze what? So fill freeze has actually two different groups. Oh. Why would there be two fill freeze groups? That's a good question. <laughs> well, now if we start to look at it, they're grouping by characteristic, right? And one of the characteristics they group by is coating. So these are all titanium sodium, titanium potassium, iron powder titanium, okay? These are 12, 13, and 14. So if I look at it, my 12, my 13, and my 14. So what do they use, what is that XX for? Extra strength. Right, so this is, <laughs> <laughs> the XX shows me tensile. I can, this is a placeholder for whatever tensile strength that I'm gonna use, okay? Fill freeze, what, what's the property here? Well, it doesn't fill real quick and it doesn't freeze too quick. It's kind of the best of both worlds. Okay, now I can run this in, in this 12, 13, and 14, so this is usually like sheet material. It doesn't have super duper deep penetration on it. Okay, so what we can also run it in all positions. Okay, now we're gonna have F3. This one is going to be 
Fast freeze. What do they mean by fast freeze? Freeze is fast. Bingo! It solidifies. Good, it solidifies quickly. This is 10 and 11. Okay, this is my 6010 and 6011, usually that's what it is. 6011, that's the poor man's version or the home man's version of 6010. Okay? Because we know that 6010 cannot be run on AC, but 6011 can. Okay? So 6010 is going to solidify quickly. Okay? These are cellulose sodium, which means it's going to dig in, it's going to penetrate. So this is deep penetrating, and it's going to pull out my impurities and leave a really deep deposit. This is also what they're going to use for pipe. They're going to use a 6010 root, usually. The reason why is, is that when we do pipe, say this is one pipe and we have another, right? When I add my bead to it, it's going to sit where it needs to sit. If I used any other rod that wasn't a fast freeze, I would have this all this material drooping into it, and we don't want that. Okay, so it's, it solidifies so that it doesn't go where it's not needed. Because remember, anything that has anything fluid that goes through it, whether it's air or water or whatever it is, if we have material that goes down, we're actually creating an eddy. So I know in the past, there was a lot, uh, not too long ago, a couple years back, that the nuclear plants, they were having to redo their piping systems prematurely. And they were saying, we don't know why that these pipes deteriorated so quickly. Well, part of their issue is, is that they did not, they were not very careful with this, and they had any material that hung down, even a, over a 16th, it creates an eddy in the system. Now, because it creates an eddy in the system, think about the pipe that it's creating onto it. Now it's making undue pressures in that pipe, and it can create fatigue points. So that's why when we do pipe, you have to be accurate. You have to make sure that everything is within tolerances. Because if anything goes through it and it's not done right, you create issues further down the pipeline. And it's not just, my weld's not gonna break. This down in the pipe is gonna break. Because we're creating something that doesn't continue that flow. It change, it ultimately, it changes the stress of the weld, right? So it's changing the stresses that were originally designed to be straight. Okay, last one. Fill freeze. Why do we have two groups of fill freeze again? am I going to see here? Okay, maybe, yeah. Low hydrogen. Why, why do we want a group that's low hydrogen? Hydrogen is really super important. When we get hydrogen in our well, it can make underbead cracking. It can make what's called honeycombing. And ultimately, our weld can break because of hydrogen. Well, hydrogen. Okay, so this means that's why we don't want to get our material wet, right? And we don't want to get our rods wet because if we have moisture, what's in water? Hydrogen, right? So this is trying to help us keep that hydrogen away. Now, this is a medium penetrating rod, but we still use it for structure. It gives us ductility, and because of that coating, 
it helps make that building or that well stronger because we don't have that hydrogen in there. Okay, so that's a big, big deal. That's why we use it. 18 is usually used. Sometimes for other applications, they'll use a 16 or a 48, but almost 90% of the time on structure, you're gonna use an 18 if you're using stick. Okay? Meow, meow, meow. Does everybody get that? Does that make sense? See my answer. Okay. 